We're going to be walking through how you can spin up your own quasi chat GPT client locally on your computer. And this will be something that you can run without internet access and it's going to be running right on your a Mac or Windows or Linux. It doesn't matter because I've Dockerized this and I'll provide a link to Docker where or uh, to GitHub where you guys can clone this repo and then just run it on your own. So um, the way it works is pretty straightforward. And just to give you guys a quick little demo of it, um, if you run this Docker container, <coughs> It'll give you this little web page like this, and you can give it a prompt. And so behind the scenes, it is using GPT-2, which is the uh, language model developed by OpenAI, the same people that make ChatGPT right now. Uh, ChatGPT is using the GPT-3.5 uh, language model, which is a lot more advanced, a lot more resource intensive. Um, this is something that's going to be a lot less uh, powerful, but nonetheless, it'll give you something you can at least play around with and tweak a little bit. So. Um, Basically, this whole thing is all about making a text response to a prompt that you give it. So um, you can ask it something like, you know, how are you feeling today? And it'll come up with some text based on, you know, the model that they've trained. Um, it, it gives you answers. You know, it's literally just generating text. Uh, and you can say, like, you know, what do you think about birthdays and you can click generate and in the back end this is just a flask application um, <laughs> so it, you know these answers aren't up to the same quality that I would expect from like chat GPT right now with GPT 3.5 but for the sake of you know something simple locally running um, this is probably gonna be uh, as good as it gets um, you there's a bunch of tests you can run for these things like uh, what is 2 plus 2 um, and what you'll find is that it's going to give you pretty weird answers like it's not going to understand it's even a math problem um, and like at no point does it even say 4 uh, you can say like who was president in 1983 and we can see if you know just really basic queries like this um, <laughs> So it's it's more about just generating some. It's almost like lorem lorem ipsum uh, text than uh, something, but it's it's somewhat relevant to the prompt. Uh, and if you guys care about how this thing works and how to run it, um, I'll go through that right now. So I'm going to go back to VS Code right now here, um, and then in GitHub after you've cloned this thing, um, you navigate to the project directory. I'm going to press Control C to stop my Docker container right now. Um, but you can see that I've written a Docker Compose file that basically just binds port 8080 on your local machine to port 5000, which is where Docker's running inside of the container. Um, and we have got this Docker file right here that is basically um, using the Python 3.8 slim base image and installing the dependencies that it needs. Um, this does require Rust along with, you know, uh, Torch, Torch Vision, and the Flask and Transformers. Um, but so the first time you run this, they will have to download a bunch of stuff, but you know it'll do it through all the official sources, so no need to worry about security risks. And then, um, yeah, you'll, you'll be off to the races. So uh, after you basically just run this command, docker dash compose up dash dash build, hit run. <clears throat> and then you can see that uh, it's going to create this little container and eventually it'll start serving traffic just like that. And uh, just for reference, this is an M1 Mac from, uh, couple years ago, so it's not the most beefy computer out there on the market by any stretch of the imagination, but um, this is the type of performance I've been getting uh, from it. And so I'm just gonna resend this information and you know, we'll come up with some other thing. It's, this is mostly kind of conversationalist. Uh, not, you're not gonna be asking this for like facts or you know, what is a good recipe for dinner tonight? Let's see if it gives us anything good. Yeah, it's like, doesn't even give you really an answer. Um, but, you know, it's something. Um, and so really the interesting part here is gonna be figuring out how can you begin to train this model um, as you want uh, for other purposes. If you go into app.py, which is where we've written most of our Flask logic, um, you can see that we can change the model name here. These models are very large. Uh, I think there's several gigabytes at least. Um, so just note that it will take time to download these depending on your internet connection speed. Um, but yeah, so that is how you can get into this stuff. I hope this is interesting, useful things. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions and be well.